the person is using the features of their first language while they're speaking a new language. So the rhythm, the pronunciation, you can hear somebody and say, oh, I think that person is from Russia or Ukraine or something because I, I detect the rhythm and the pronunciation. Or that person speaks Spanish or that person speaks Chinese. And sometimes we're not exactly right, but what we're doing is we're listening to the pronunciation and we're listening to the rhythm and the way that they're speaking. If we do have an accent, there are certain things we're doing that we can change, but we don't always know what to change to make them understand. And I'll tell you right now, it's not say it louder. It's not say it again the same way, because that's not the answer. Something is different in the way the person might be speaking because of the influence of their language. And many of my clients, if they're in a PhD program in the United States, they were educated in the United States, they do not have a language problem. They have an accent problem. I applaud the people who speak more than one language and then use that language in the workplace. That, that is astonishing to me, that people have that skill, and yet they're made to feel that they're not good enough. And that's, one of the, that's my new focus. When I work with people, you are brilliant. You're successful. Look what you've accomplished, and you can't pronounce the word. That's OK. Own it that you can't pronounce it, and then just try to say it, or just say, I have an accent. If you don't understand me, please ask me to repeat. As time goes on, hopefully we're all going to be more tolerant and try to take away, peel away some of those biases that we have. And like you said, Ted Coe's doing, listen to what the information is, not how they're saying it. But on the other side, we want to help people when they're relaying that information to say it in a way that they know they're understood and that gives them more confidence.